And so today we uh, will be, this session is really intended for people who are new to GeoGebra. I'm gonna show you some things that I, um, hopefully by the end of the lesson, you'll know enough to like play with GeoGebra yourself and start doing some um, explorations. So the, before we get, even get started talking about GeoGebra, uh, I feel that right now in education, we are going through like a crazy time. We're all going through a crazy time. So I want to thank you as an educator. You know, it's Saturday morning. Um, for some of you, it's like, it's like nighttime. So I want to thank you for being here today. Like you being here today to learn something that could potentially you could bring back to the classroom and benefit your students tells me like tells me that you're, you take your craft very serious. Um, so thank you for being here. I know that we as teachers do way more than people think. And um, it's I'm happy. I'm happy to see like so many people and so many people from like different parts of the world. I feel so international right now. All right. So let's get started. So on today's agenda, we're going to do some like brief introduction. I want to tell you why I think you should be using GeoGebra, why GeoGebra is such a good option. Um, we I definitely want to make sure that everyone attending the session is able to set up is able, thank you, Katya, is able to set up an account. Uh, I also want to show you how to like find some lessons, how to find some applets, how to find some resources, and give maybe give you some ideas to for you to start using it with your students. All right. So let's let's get to it. So my name is Libo Valencia. I've been teaching mathematics for the past 13 years. I teach both high school and college. I strongly believe that understanding math can help all students develop critical thinking and problem solving skills that they can use outside the classroom. As a teacher, I love using different technologies, um, GeoGebra being one of them. And um, I also will mention that as a teacher, I've had the opportunity to teach everything from remedial algebra classes or essential algebra classes all the way up to calculus. And in all the classes that I've taught, I've always used GeoGebra, so GeoGebra is such a great tool. All right, so I, the like part of the goal today is so that by the end of like the our session, you're you have an like you have an idea of how to get started with GeoGebra and you can start doing some self-exploration. So why do you do I think that you should be using GeoGebra? You should give GeoGebra a try. So GeoGebra is a very dynamic and interactive software for all levels of education. Now, what I'm gonna share is gonna, is gonna have like a secondary flavor because that's what I teach high school and college, uh, but it could really be used for elementary teachers uh, as well. So GeoGebra offers a free online platform for both teachers and students with over 1 million free classroom resources created by a, by a multilingual community. So that I think is like one of the, you know, like one of the things that makes GeoGebra so powerful that anything that I create or anything that somebody creates like in anywhere in the world, I can have access to as long as they make it public and, and, and we can share resources. Um, GeoGebra also now has a feature, uh, like a classroom feature that allows, um, that allows teachers to like monitor students progress live. So that's something, I don't, honestly, I don't know if we'll get to that, but uh, I'll try. So let's get started. So the first thing that I think you absolutely, absolutely need to do is set up an account. So the purpose, the purpose of setting up the account is so that you can start like organizing materials and like start organizing things by class and finding things. So if you have an account, great. It's not gonna take a long time, but if you don't have an account, let's set up an account. So I have the steps in here and then I'm gonna like, after I show you the steps, I'm gonna go and do it myself. So the first thing that you should do is I'd like you to go to geogebra.org and then on the upper right corner, you're going to see the little squares. You're going to click in there and then uh, for, I'm sorry, you're going to click on sign in and then all the way at the bottom, you're going to have the option to create account. So I'll give you a chance to write that down or like to, to go on the computer and do it. There you go. Okay. So Sue, yes, you have different options. So I'll give people a chance to do this. Um, I tend to speak too fast when I get when I get excited. So if you need me to repeat something, you just put it on the chat. I'll, I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat as well. So go to geogebra.org. And then on the upper right corner, you're going to see right next to the, the little squares. You're going to see sign in. You're going to click in there. And then you're going all the way at the bottom. You're going to click on create an account. And again, the purpose of creating an account, GeoGebra hasn't tried to sell me anything yet. Um, so like the purpose of creating an account is just so that you can start organizing your files, organizing your lessons, organizing your resources. So I think that's that's the that's why I think everyone should have a GeoGebra account. 
So hopefully you got a chance to do this already, georgiaread.org, sign in, create account. So once you click in there, you're gonna have different options to create an account. So you could do at this point, you could do whichever you want. Um, I, I think my account is a, attached to my email address. So you could use your email, uh, pick a username, password, and then uh, do the consent thing and then create an account. So I, these are the steps, these are like screenshots of the steps and then I'm gonna show you how to do this. If you already have an account, just like log into it. And then if you don't have an account, please like create, do yourself a favor and create an account. All right, so let me see if I can start showing you. Uh, can people still see my screen? Can you give me a thumbs up, somebody? Or like, just let me know in the chat. Georgia, that oh, thank you for putting the link in there. Thank you so much. All right, so if we go on georgia.org, this is what you're going to get. So, again, right next to the little squares, you're going to click on sign in, and then all the way at the bottom, you have the option to create account. So, once you click in there, it's going to bring you to this menu. You're going to type in, I have my account cre uh, attached to my email address. There you go. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you. You can still see my screen. Perfect. So, then you're going to do this. Let me go back to my presentation. Oh my God, I have too many tabs open as usual. All right, so let me open this, make it bigger again. All right. All right, so once you do that, um, Georgia was gonna send you like a confirmation email. You're going to um, accept it or click on the, on, the, on the thing and then done. And then at this point, you should officially have your GeoGebra account. Um, you could type in the information for like your profile or not. You could skip this for now. Um, but then like at this point, you should be able to get started with GeoGebra. So I'll wait a little bit to make sure that everyone is all set. So right now we're just creating an account. So we went to GeoGebra.org, sign in all the way at the bottom, create account. Uh, then you could use whichever method you want to create the account. I use my email address. Again, GeoGebra hasn't tried to sell, sell me anything yet. Uh, so I think it's safe for you to create it using your email address. You're gonna confirm your email address if you use it. And then um, this is just information for like your profile. I think you could like skip it and then just go, let's get started with GeoGebra. So at this point, let me know. I can only see a few people. So maybe let me know through the chat if we are ready. Let me know if you're ready. So we can start exploring GeoGebra. And the important thing is that right now, hopefully you do have an account. Waiting for the confirmation email. Uh, Drake, maybe check your junk or spam folder because you should get it right away. So I'll wait like a minute. People finish it. Gene, okay, I'll slow down, I'll slow down. So let me repeat the instructions that just happened. And then, uh, and then uh, we'll take it from there. Victoria's in, very nice. Gene, I'm gonna go through the steps again. I told you, I told you, I get excited, especially when we talk about like math and technology. Okay, so if you haven't done this, you're gonna go to geogebra.org. I think somebody shared the link on the chat. If my helpers, maybe Kathy, can you ch share the link of geogebra.org on the chat as well? So on the upper right corner, you're gonna click on sign in. And then all the way at the bottom, you're gonna have the option to create account. So you're gonna click on create account and then you could provide your email address, come up with a username, password and whatnot. And then, and then oh, I think we're missing a name there. Thank you, Guillermo. And then um, you could create the account. If you use the email, Georgia was gonna send you like a confirmation email. And then from there, you should be able to get started with GeoGebra. Thank you. Thank you for people that are putting in the, the link. All right, so I'm gonna wait like one more minute. So at this point, at this point, let me see, I got something on the chat. There you go, Tim, thank you. That's why Tim is a GeoGebra Jedi. Uh, try signing my account is banned. Uh, can you maybe try like a different email address or a Steam? Like, look at team suggestion, maybe via Google. So, let me go to actually, let me wait like one more minute, make sure that people are able to do it. Let me show you once again. So, once you go to GeoGebra, 
if you click on sign in and you go all the way at the bottom, you have the create account. And then from here, uh, you could do it using your like Google account. You could do an email address. I use it. I, I have my account um, attached to my email address, but there are older options. Check. All right, so uh, John, see, I have, I had to go back though because there's a someone locked me out. Okay, <laughs> um, I think Tim Tim gave an option. So after selecting create account, it's also super fast to simply log in via Google. Thank you, Tim. All right, but it's Victoria. Then you're good. If you created the account, then you are good. So at this point, once you log in to your account. All right, hopefully you see, you probably won't see your picture in here, but you, you now you should be able to log in into your account. Let me know if that is the case. If you're in, please let me know via the chat that you're in. That right now you're in your, your okay, thank you, Donna. Let me know that you're in so I could like show you the next thing. Again, this is a, a session for like an introduction like GeoGebra 101. So if you need a little more, a couple more minutes setting up your account, let us know. Students, okay, perfect, perfect, Edward, thank you. Not in you, Sam, okay. All right, so hopefully at this point, everyone has an account. All right, so let me do the next thing that I wanna show you. So at this point, you could now like log into your account. So there's like a couple of things that I wanna show you. So the first is if you click on, on profile, you're gonna see like sort of like your information. Right now, you probably don't have a lot of information in here if you just created your account. But what I wanna show you is like, this is like the reason why I wanted you to create an account. So if you click on this create, I would like you right now to create a folder for like one of your classes. So like, let's say that you're teaching geometry or algebra. I'm going to create a folder called GeoGebra training. All right. So I'm going to do create and then notice that I now have a folder for GeoGebra training. So the purpose of like creating this folder is so that I can like anything that I find helpful for like a particular class, I can then drag it and put it in there. I see I have a couple of things. All right, they, oh, good, good. Thank you for letting me know. I'm still not in, but go ahead. Okay, you have an account. All right, thank you. Oh, everything that I'm gonna show you, so if you weren't able to create an account, you should still be able to do like many of the things that we're gonna do, except like creating a folder. You have an account, Maria Fernanda, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I feel like it's safe for me now to, in the interest of time, to keep going. So again, if you, once you're in your account, if you click on, on profile, I would like you to create a folder for like one of your classes, right? Like if you're teaching algebra or geometry or algebra two, trigonometry, pre -cal. So create a folder, you just click on create and then click on folder, give it a name, and then it should appear in here. So if you are new to GeoGebra, I think a very good place to start will be GeoGebra classes. So if you click on the little squares, you're gonna see that all the way at the bottom, you have the option for GeoGebra classic. So right now, I would like you to click in there, and then it's gonna open this, this uh, let me see, got it, got it. How to create the folder. Okay, so how to create the folder. Once you are, you have to be logged into your account. So once you're logging into your account, if you click on profile on the left side, it should bring you to like this menu. It, it's probably gonna look different because this is your profile. And then if you click on create, the very first option that you get is folder. Uh, Kaori, let me know if that was helpful. So we click on create and then the very first option, perfect. All right, I'm glad. So click on create and then folder. So as a new GeoGebra user, I think that a very safe place to start will be GeoGebra Classic. So if you click on the little squares and go into GeoGebra Classic, it's gonna open this. So you can think of GeoGebra, like if you're getting started as, as like a super graphing calculator, right? who does like way more than your the, cal the graphing calculator that you use in your classroom. So for example, once you're here, you could type in, I don't know, let's say that you wanted to graph a function, a linear function, something like this. So you could graph a line, you could graph, um, I don't know, let's say that you wanted to graph something that is not easily done on a graphing calculator. Let's say that you're doing something like a circle. 
right? So we could do a circle. So you could do different things in here. So anything that you could do on a graphing calculator in the classroom, you could do in GeoGebra and the students, like one of, the, I don't know if you watch uh, Marcus's like speech in, in, in the morning, but like one of the things is this is, this is like equity, right? Like the students will have access to this when they go home. Like they don't have to be in the classroom to be able to like graph things on uh, with the technology, but they could go home and do it themselves. They could also access it on their, on their devices. So I wanna show you that there are a lot of options in here. We don't have time to like explore all of them, but I wanna show you some of the things that you could do in GeoGebra. And again, GeoGebra classes is like, pretty pretty like user friendly It's very intuitive as you start looking at these options you're going to see that oh i wonder if i could do this in geogebra and most of the time the, most of the time the answer is yes so like right now i have a, a, a line in a circle and then i notice here that there is an intersection feature so if i click in there now notice geogebra is going to tell me to select the intersection of like two objects right so i'm going to say like okay i want the intersection of my line and my circle so now GeoGebra just gave me, okay, like this line in this circle intersect at this point. So you can think of GeoGebra as like a support, right? So like if I'm doing a quadratic and linear system in my classroom, I could do it and then go in GeoGebra and very quickly like find the solutions for the, for the students or the students can double check their work. Can use without, I can't just can save. Okay. You could, yeah, you could definitely use GeoGebra Classic without having an account, but you won't be able to say, which is like one of the things that I wanted to show you. So like, let's say that you're working on something or you want to show something to your students. Now that we have this, if you go on the upper right corner, we can save it, okay? So now that I save it, I'm going to call it, I don't know, let's call it like training one. So I'm going to save it. So I just created something. And I want to show you that if I go back to my account and I go to my profile, the the thing that i just did is there so that is part of the reason why i wanted you to create an account because like anything that we do or anything that we start finding that we start exploring you could go and save to directly to your account um let me show you something else so i'm going to go back in here i don't want to close it i'm just going to open another geogebra classic tab and i want to show you something else that you could do so let's say so share, I think like one of the powers too of GeoGebra, like one of the major selling points of GeoGebra is that when you make things like public, um, then older people can find them. It's not going to change like what you do, but then like if I find what you did and I make a copy, then I could use it for my classroom. So I will recommend sharing uh, unless it's something that is like a work in progress or you don't want to finish. They usually can log in through school. Okay. All right. I'm getting distracted with the chat. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so let me go in here. So let's say that I'm creating a polygon, right? You're teaching geometry. So notice GeoGebra kind of gives you like, okay, like so it gives you some instructions in how to use it. So let's say that I'm creating a polygon, right? And the, the GeoGebra features are very intuitive. Like it, it's pretty much going to do whatever you think it's going to do. So let's say that I have this polygon and I'm exploring, I don't know, let's say that I'm exploring something like, um, let's see, it's something that like uh, measuring an angle, right? So let's say that I want to measure an angle. So I can either like do three points or maybe select two lines and then it's going to give me the measure of that angle. I can also like say, for example, find the distance, maybe the distance between two points or maybe the distance of, a, of like a line segment. So GeoGebra is very intuitive. It allows for exploration. It allows for like different things that you could do. I want to show you, so like, Start thinking about like how you could utilize this in the classroom. Like if you have this, students can do a lot of exploration. So you can like kind of like transition from like uh, uh, doing like a lot of direct instruction to like, okay, let the students explore and find that on their own. Also like our students nowadays are very comfortable using the technology. So I wanna show you, uh, I'm gonna go back to my presentation. I wanna show you all right, so I show you this already. You go to GeoGebra Classic. So I want to show you a couple of examples from like my geometry class. So like one day I asked like somebody, like my students in my geometry class, we were doing right triangles to take a picture of something that they told was a right triangle, upload it to GeoGebra, and then prove or disprove that it was actually a right triangle. And then I didn't give them a lot of instructions. So some students use like parallel lines. They use like, okay, like let me, I'm sorry, not parallel lines, like the slope of a line. They use like Pythagorean theorem. They were able to like measure the angle, again, to prove or disprove that the triangle was uh, a right triangle. 
Students can also do something like when we were doing parallelograms, I said the same thing, take a picture of a parallelogram, upload it to GeoDRA and then prove or disprove that is actually a parallelogram. Now I wanna show you how to do that uh, because it's actually not, not very hard. So the first thing that you will do is of course, like take a picture of whatever you wanna upload to GeoGebra. Yes, it's very helpful, Elizabeth, and it's very interactive and the students love it. So I wanna show you right now that on my desktop, oh Jesus, on my desktop, I have some pictures. So I have this picture of a shape on my desktop is already there. So you're gonna take a picture and then put it in a safe place, whether it's your, like your documents or your desktop or whatever. So the picture is already there. So I'm gonna go back to GeoGebra. I'm gonna create a new, I'm gonna go into like a new GeoGebra classic because I, I feel like if I show you like too many things in, in like one screen, it could be like too overwhelming. So let's say that I have this, right? And I want the picture that I took, I wanna upload it to GeoGebra to have my students do some work with it. So if you click on the upper left, there is a plus sign in there. So if you click in there, you have different options. One of the options being image. So I'm gonna click on image and then I'm gonna allow this. So I'm gonna browse. I show you that my image was already saved to my desktop. So I'm gonna do this. And now I have the image uploaded to GeoGebra. What I would recommend is once you have it there, if you like right click on it and go to settings, I'm gonna show you this a couple of times, don't worry. Uh, you could make it a background image. And then from there, the students can start, like, start playing with it. I've like Geo, I have uh, in terms of the, the um, browser, like if you could tell, like I have I, right now I'm using Safari, but I also use it on like Firefox and Google Chrome. I don't think maybe Tim, is there like one that you prefer over another? I don't know if there's one that, but I haven't had any issues using a browser. Um, I usually use Safari because like all my like all my stuff is like saving there, like in terms of like passwords. So like once you like let's say that the students you want the students to do some more with this with this picture at this point. So now I can like okay, let's like play some points right at the vertices of this shape, and then I can connect them, then I can like measure an angle. So like think about like the power that this could have on like students. In my experience, this can make your lesson very interactive. It makes it fun. Their student, their student like buying into it because they're gonna go and take a picture of something that is relevant to them, something that, that matters to them and then upload it and they're, they're doing math. Um, one thing that when I started doing things like this in the classroom, I always had the thing like, oh my God, they're not gonna do as many examples, right? Like if I give them a worksheet, they might do like 10 examples. But even if they do like one example, but they do like, they go deep into the example, it's better or is just as effective as doing like a lot of repetition. Um, so this is something that they really like uh, with, my, with my classes. So you just like take a picture. I'm gonna show you once again. So let me do like a blank one. So remember, you take the picture and then you save it to your desktop or save it whatever you, you want it. And then on the upper left, if you go on plus and you click on image and then you browse, remember it's already saved to my desktop. So I'm gonna go into shape and I'm gonna put the, the picture in there. You could drag it, you could move it around, you can make it bigger, you could like make it smaller, you could put it like at an angle. What I would recommend, like after you're read, like you're ready, if you like right click and make it a background picture, it makes it like very convenient to work with. And one of the things that I love about GeoGebra is it's very intuitive, right? You're gonna start playing with this hopefully after the session and you're gonna start doing things and seeing things that are very cool. All right, so in the interest of time, I'm gonna go back to my presentation. I'm gonna go back to my presentation and I wanna show you a couple of more things. Okay, so these are examples from geometry. And then um, with my pre -cal class, we were recently doing like conic sections. So we did like the Pringles Ringles. So they created a circle using Pringles. And then at the, like after they created the circle, what do you think I had them do? Of course, I had them take a picture of the, of the ring, upload it to GeoGebra, and then find the equation for that circle. It was interesting because some students actually like their circle looked more like an ellipse. So they were able to like find the equation of an ellipse, which was like the next conic section that we were gonna use. So this could make your lessons like interactive. It's fun for the kids. It's gonna be fun for you. And this is just a couple of, uh, of ideas. All right. The other thing that I really, really want to show you is, let me go back to GeoGebra. So once you go to like the GeoGebra site, 
I want to show you now like how to find like some resources. So if you just scroll down, you're going to have like feature resources. So these resources are pretty like safe to use, right? Because these are done like by the GeoGebra team or by some of the, our GeoGebra Jedi's like Tim, Steve, Rob. So like anything that is in here that is being featured is most likely going to be um, like safe for you to use, right? So like you have all different kinds of resources in here. And then in addition to that, you can also um, use the search, right? So if you're doing something like, I don't know, like I was recently doing optimization. So if I'm doing optimization, I can click in here. Just be aware if you search, like if you're looking for something via search, you're gonna find something that anybody has done. Now, if you find somebody like, like Tim, anything that Tim does is good. It has a check, it's like legit. So you can, that, that is safe to use. Um, let me go back quickly in here. Yes, they are also, that's actually one of the things that I wanted to show you. So let me see if I can show you all my presentation. So there are resources in there. Okay, so let's say, actually, hold on. Let me not get ahead of myself. So let's say that I find this resource by Tim. You know it's good if it's done by Tim. So you can, like, once you have it, you can uh, make a copy of this activity. So like once you make, like, let's say that you find something that you like, something that you think can be helpful for your classes, I can make a copy of it right? I can do a little editing and whatnot, and then I can save it. I'm just right now, in the interest of time, just going to make a copy and save it. So once I save it, I want to show you that if I go back to my thing, now my copy is there. And then like, once you have it there, you could put it in one of the folders, right? I can say, you know what, I'm going to put this on my GeoGebra folder, and then once I go in there, like the whatever I made is there. So it's very easy to like find resources. And as you start finding things, you're going to find like, oh, like this person does like very good resources for ge geometry or this person has like really cool stuff for, for algebra. So you start working and finding things that will work best for you. I see something on the chat, Tim. Oh, Tim is next. Yes, I'm attending that session. Yes, 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 yes. Um, okay, so let me show you, let me go back to my presentation. All right, so in addition to like resources and, and lessons, one of the things that is like powerful, powerful with GeoGebra is like finding applets. So I'm just gonna give you like two quick examples. So my Calc students were doing like an optimization problem where, you know, you cut out the corners and you're trying to maximize the volume, giving like a piece of paper or a piece, a piece of metal or something. So we did this and then I use um, an applet created by, um, by Vincent, who is on Twitter, is also on GeoGebra. And then like, I showed this to my students and like, they were like, their minds were like blown away, right? My mind was like blown away. Because think of like everything that is happening in here for them to see the relation between like the original piece of paper, what is happening with the volume, and then what the graph looks like and the relation to like the slope of the tangent line. So seeing all of this in like one example can be very, very powerful. So using applets um, on, Ge on, like, on GeoGebra could be very, very powerful. And you find them pretty much the same way. If you go into, if you go into search, Sorry, did I click on some? Yeah, if you go in here and you click on optimization, I think if I do optimi, I can't see what I'm writing right now. Optimization, give me a second. And then you like scroll down, right? You're gonna find different activities, different things that you can use with your students. Use, I think like I was like typing optimization that I found it, right? So like notice the, the person who made it was Vincent. So if you could click on Vincent, you can see like some of the things that he has done. And then because like I made a copy of it and then I gave so much, some instructions for, for my students, then now I can, I can, like I also have it under my, under my resources. So I think it was Sue, like Sue, I think you asked like, is there an advantage between sharing and not sharing or making it private? If you share it, then the advantage is that other people might be able to use it. And then like anything that you do is not only gonna benefit your students and your classes, but it could benefit students like, around the world. Uh, so that's another thing that I wanted to show you. Let me see. Yes, you could also make a copy. Yes, this is, this is, yeah, th very helpful. Let me show you another example. Let me go back to my presentation. All right, so, I, so after this, the follow-up was like, they did the lesson, then we played with GeoGebra, and then they were able to create their own uh, maximum value, give it like a, a regular printing piece of paper. 
Another thing, like another example that I want to show you, this is also from like a pre-cal class, was like we were studying like polar coordinates. So we got to play a, a game of like battleship using polar coordinates. This was, used, um, I used uh, an applet created by Daniel. So this was also amazing. If you click on it, like the student, the students were able to like um, adjust the angle and the distance to like hit the target. And my students were extremely engaged. I don't think I would have been able to give them like a worksheet where they would have been disengaged. They were ended up happening is that they were playing against one another and like timing to see like who will get like 10 targets faster. Uh, so it was like, it was very nice. It was very, it was very interactive. It was very engaging. Uh, let me go back to my, to in here, GeoGebra, let me go back to my profile. So in here, to be honest, I like, these are some of the people that I follow in GeoGebra. I'm like, to be honest, I follow like all of them on Twitter. So I feel that usually like I see something on Twitter and then I go on GeoGebra and I copy it. But like anything done by this amazing GeoGebra Jedis is like, safe it's like safe to use um and then hopefully anything that you find you know you by by now you not know how to save it and then if you go under your like resources you can organize it there um how are we doing on time i think i have like a few minutes so at this point i know that i speak fast especially when i get excited and when i'm talking about geogebra yeah so if you do like exactly susan thank you for sharing that um, you can find things on, on Twitter. You could always reach out to people. I feel that the GeoGebra community is a very generous community. People are always like sharing things that work. I'm always sharing the, any, the, anything that works for me. I'm always sharing. Um, so at, at this point, we have a few minutes. So is there anything, any questions that you might have? I hope that this was helpful. The, the, like the goal for this lesson is that was like for you to have an account and for you to like know enough to start playing with GeoGebra, start finding resources and some of, and see like some of the power, right? That, that, um, that, that you could have by using GeoGebra in the classroom. Hi, Katia. How are we doing on time? Am I over my time? No, You're right? doing wonderful time. You have to <laughs> get to the next session. We have like seven minutes. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Thank you so, so much. You, you are incredible. I just uh, wanted to say for the participants, if you want to more to see more Lib, Libo, I'm sorry, Libo. Uh, yes. <laughs> in, in our webpage, there are links to your, I believe, to your Twitter. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm and, pretty active on Twitter. I also have a YouTube account where I've done, I've done some things. I think I have a, 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 some videos on GeoGebra too, like how to embed it into Canvas or something into Canvas, which is the, the, the learning system that we use. So like, if you have any questions, let me know. I really, really hope that this was helpful. <laughs> Absolutely, this was wonderful. I think you, you give project this enthusiasm. I can see your students. Oh my gosh, I'm sure they love it. Thank yes, you they so do. Much. So, uh, no. how people can contact you if somebody wants to ask a question? How they can contact? So, you? I think I see like feel that the probably the best way will be through Twitter. I'm on Twitter. Uh, I'm pretty active on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Mister Valencia twenty four. And if you go on I there, like you could. Is if in yeah, the link. description on the web page for. Geodra. Yes, it's also on the GeoDrive. Yeah, thank you for putting that in there. Uh, so if you have any questions, thank you so much for being here. Uh, you know, like I, I'm gonna give you a round of applause for being here. <laughs> Because Thank you so like, much for, for giving your time, Libo. We are so happy. I hope you we can see face to face next year. Yes, yes, uh, yes. We are hopefully. planning to do already a probably hybrid. Yes, it, it sounds that how hybrid this is the future. So yes, we learned yes, yes. something from the past. Yes, we learned that that we can do it online. But if people can uh, come, it will be nice. Marcus wants to come. I don't know if you heard his uh, his <laughs> uh, his talk. He said he no, I did. I did. Yes, yeah, so he will come next year. Oh, Thank that's you awesome. So, much. so that's uh, awesome. I, want to, I want to say to participants, so this was our first uh, prepared speech and the wonderful introduction. And mm -hmm. as Lipo said, uh, there's a, a lot of his resources and other resources. And the next se sessions, the next session will be Tim Brzezinski. Uh, you don't want to miss that session. You don't want to miss that session. I'm attending and, that session. And what you do, you go to lobby. This is like, it's a new uh, this, uh, Zoom events. It's new to me and to, to many people. So you have to go to lobby and get to the other room, like real life. Okay. So this is. Thank you, Libo, once more. And and uh, you're very welcome. 
with incredible. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing your time and knowledge. Thank you. And no, question, thank you for inviting me. I'm ha happy to share. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for attending. Oh, people I really follow hope you already. They say they're following you now. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I hope that you could take this back to your classroom. And I know that your students will appreciate it and benefit from it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I think we can we can stop so people can go to the other room. Cool. OK, so let me questions. stop uh, sharing. And then I want to, uh, so I'm going to stop it, right? Yes. And at, at okay. the webinar, I think, at the recording, I don't know. <laughs> Thank oh, you perfect. So but you, you, it was wonderful, very, uh, very uh, engaging talk. Oh, what oh, was thank the you. answer for the, for the little figurines? I mean, oh, the, I use that activation, like a same but different. So people start like comparing. I uh, do it like for like in, with like math concepts. It's, it's very helpful because it provides like different uh, entry points. Oh, well, I, I have to think what I would show because I am not a, a Star Wars fan. <laughs> <laughs> it could be anything. I'm going to send you yeah. a link. I'm going to send you a link that uh, might be helpful. I'll send it to you via Twitter. Thank All you right. So. Thank okay. you so much. I'm going to I'm going to stop it right now. Right. It's safe yes, to stop yes. it. Thank you so much. And let's go to the lobby. And so thank Take you. care. Bye bye. Take care.